beginning with, we have with us Mr. Dhanendra Kumar, uh, the former executive director for India in the World Bank. Uh, we're also joined by Mr. Dharmkirti Joshi, chief economist with uh, Crystal Limited. And Mr. Tarun Kapoor, former secretary, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas in the Government of India, is also joining us. Welcome, all of you gentlemen, uh, to Sunset TV. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Kumar, Mr. Dhanendra Kumar, and let's start by putting things in perspective here. Let's, let's start by not only understanding, uh, you know, the scope uh, of the economic impact which we're talking about, but also various aspects of it. Uh, in which areas specifically are we looking at, given uh, the sanctions and uh, given the crisis uh, on, on the ground there? Thank you very much, Vishalji. Uh, let me first of all give my greetings to all the viewers on Mahashivratri Day. We are meeting on a very, very auspicious evening and uh, I hope and pray that the blessings of Lord Shiva uh, are showered on all of us. Uh, the question which you have asked is extremely important and uh, hovering around our minds uh, these days, all of us. This is one of the most complex situations, most intricate situation uh, the world has been facing ever since World War II for a number of reasons. Uh, well, Russia uh, has taken it uh, to their heart to uh, teach a lesson to Ukraine for their audacity to join or attempt to join NATO. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the Western powers, uh, they have all combined against uh, this move and uh, they, uh, without taking any military action directly, uh, they have imposed all the possible economic sanctions uh, against Russia, uh, including uh, the SWIFT, as you just mentioned, mm -hmm. and many other things. Now, this is impacting the world economy in a number of ways. Uh, well, let me begin by saying that today the entire world is interconnected and most of the uh, supplies, uh, most of the components, ingredients, commodities from one country to another and therefore, disruption of anything anywhere uh, leads to uh, disruption of the entire supply chain. Mm -hmm. Also, the transportation, the, for example, oil uh, supply lines, pipelines, gas lines, Europe is dependent on almost one-fourth of its needs on, uh, on uh, Russia and, uh, and Ukraine. Okay. Uh, Ukraine is also a very big producer of wheat and sunflower and many rare earths and important minerals. Mm -hmm. So all these things make the situation extremely complex for the world economy, which is resulting in increased inflationary pressures and also difficulties in several countries in uh, uh, many ways. Okay. And we can cover some of these things later. Okay. okay. You know, do you agree with uh, what Mr. Joshi is saying that uh, there's this spillover effect which we're talking about? You were also earlier mentioning uh, how, you know, wheat and uh, other rare minerals in addition to oil, natural gas are, are, are an important component of uh, this, this economic situation uh, uh, which we are looking at. Uh, but this is going to be a short term impact for many countries. Do you agree, uh, Mr. Kumar? Yes, I agree with Mr. Joshi in this regard. Uh, the impact, yes, certainly would be there. There are so many uh, things uh, which are uh, others are uh, uh, dependent on on uh, uh, on the region. For example, lithium for the lithium batteries, titanium, and other rare earths commodities, uh, sunflower oil. There is a possibility that uh, the prices may go up. Wheat. They are one of the biggest exporters, and because of the uh, sanctions and because of the difficulties in transportation, there could be possibility of uh, uh, for India to uh, supply and uh, get some benefit out of it. But uh, uh, altogether, uh, I agree with him that uh, in the short term, yes, uh, perhaps there may not be too much of a stress on India. But India does have its uh, moments of concern. As uh, it has been pointed out by uh, the finance minister, India is closely studying the situation, mm -hmm. and particularly in the field of oil, gas, 
and uh, other things which are imported from there. Russia is 25th most important and the biggest uh, trading partner of India. Although the total trade is, uh, is not really too much, but uh, for, for everything concerned, it would be important. Okay. And uh, same is true of the of uh, uh, of the, uh, the other uh, uh, region also. Okay. Uh, in this regard. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, do you agree with uh, what Mr. Joshi is saying that uh, there's the spillover effect which we're talking about? You were also earlier mentioning uh, how you know wheat and uh, other rare minerals, in addition to oil, natural gas, are are, are an important component of uh, this this economic situation uh, uh, which we are looking at. Uh, but this is going to be a short-term impact for many countries. Do you agree, uh, Mr. Kumar? Yes, I agree with Mr. Joshi in this regard. Uh, the impact, yes, certainly would be there. There are so many uh, things uh, which are uh, others are in, uh, in, uh, dependent on on uh, uh, on the region. For example, lithium for the lithium batteries, titanium, and other rare earths. Commodities, uh, sunflower oil, there's a possibility that uh, the prices may go up. Wheat, they are one of the biggest exporters. And because of the uh, sanctions and because of the difficulties in transportation, there could be possibility of uh, uh, for India to uh, supply and uh, get some benefit out of it. But uh, uh, altogether, uh, I agree with him that... Uh, in the short term, yes, uh, perhaps there may not be too much of a stress on India, but India does have its uh, moments of concern. As uh, has been pointed out by uh, the finance minister, India is closely studying the situation, mm -hmm. and particularly in the field of oil, gas, and uh, other things which are imported from there. Russia is 25th most important and the biggest uh, trading partner of India, although the total trade is uh, is not really too much, but uh, for for everything concerned, it would be important. Okay. And uh, same is true of the of uh, 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 of the, uh, the other uh, uh, region also. Okay. Uh, in this regard. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, can we comment from you, Dhaneendra Ji, on uh, you know? Uh, because if we're looking at uh, uh, the sanctions part, these are likely to, as Mr. Kapoor was pointing out, these are likely to play out for a longer term and perhaps may, you know, result into another uh, economic escalation of tensions between Russia and the Western world as well uh, uh, for a bit more extended period. So what needs to be done uh, by uh, countries like India and others as well uh, who might end up being, uh, you know, the, the sufferers uh, in, uh, due to this uh, vis-a-vis -vis the economic impact we're talking about? Uh, I think India would have very limited uh, uh, elbow room in this regard because much of it is uh, uh, to be played out in the uh, geopolitical uh, scene. Uh, as far as the sanctions is concerned, Western sanctions particularly banning some Russian banks from SWIFT global financial uh, payment systems will make it many, uh, very cumbersome for many companies, many countries to do any kind of business with the country. India can still do something in terms of ruble and rupee trade, but still. And uh, there would be issues of exchange rate. There could also be risk of sanctions if individual Russian commodity players or Russia retaliate by stopping the supply of its products. There would also be effect on supply chains and uh, also on certain businesses uh, because of the rise in the interest rates. Russia has already raised its interest rates, uh, almost doubled. So on the question of interest rate sensitive businesses, there would be uh, some impact. Mm -hmm. So one has to see it from the, in the granular form. The edible oil, for example, coming from Ukraine, the pipeline, the, the ports, from where it is to flow. In the financial market, one has to see the uh, high frequency indicators like financial markets, exchange rates, crude price in the short run. And uh, India imports about 80% of its crude oil. And as Mr. Joshi rightly said, it has to be calibrated so that the impact of inflation and the, uh, and the spin off effect in uh, rise in uh, crude prices and petroleum prices 
is not really fully passed on to the consumers because all the transport cost would also go up. Okay. Uh, so at the end of the day, we have to ensure that the consumers are, when we are coming out of the COVID, do not suffer that much. And we have to also calibrate that uh, how best to make sure that our energy needs are met, maybe some from the coal, like aluminum, cement, steel, sponge, iron, uh, paper, fertilizer, chemical, and so on. We will also have to meet the demand of our power plants first mm -hmm. in order to keep the power requirement going. So altogether, I think uh, we would be uh, concerned in keeping our economy in good shape, inflation under control, and the needs of our consumers uh, meeting them. So uh, I would feel that the next few uh, weeks and months are going to be crucial. Some of the items coming out of Russia and Ukraine, like uh, as we mentioned, essential metals like palladium, aluminum, nickel, they are used uh, in everything from mobile phones to automobiles. Okay. And lith lithium cells are for, uh, for the electric vehicles and so on. So I would feel that it has to be a multi-pronged strategy. Mm -hmm. One has to find alternative sources of supply okay. and also where to get it uh, in the most convenient manner considering the constraints in the supply lines. Okay, okay. There it is. Uh, you summed it up uh, perfectly well, Mr. Kumar. Multi-pronged strategy would be required. And, uh, of course, uh, it is a matter of concern. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dhanendra, Mr. Dharmkirti Joshi, and Mr. Tan Kapoor as well. For